welcome to my channel I'm Scott and in this video we're gonna talk about WAC weighted average cost of capital we're gonna cover three slides in this video first I'm gonna give you a high level understanding of WAC I'll give you an example and then a summary at the end the way every company raises money is through debt and equity especially when you're starting out you're not generating any profits so you have to raise debt or equity to fund your growth Lots of companies in the first few years they're operating are losing money. So it's better to take on equity than debt. Because when you take on debt, you have to pay the interest on your debt. That means you have to take on more debt to pay the interest on your old debt. And it becomes a debt snowball and it keeps growing and growing. When you take on equity, it's an option to pay a dividend. You don't have to. But in this video, we're just going to talk about how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So to do that, we need to figure out the cost of debt and equity, and then the weight of debt and the weight of equity. This is a real basic formula. It's the weight of equity times the cost of equity, plus the weight of debt times the cost of debt. And since debt is tax deductible, you have to multiply that by one minus the tax rate. And it's not all debt, it's interest bearing debt. So if you buy products on credit and have accounts payable, that's generally not part of this formula. It's interest bearing debt. An example is a bank loan. Another example is when you take on debt from investors. So like everything in life, an example is so much more effective. So let's go through an example so you can see it in real time. First, let's figure out how much debt we have. So we start a company and we take a bank loan, a $3,000 loan. The interest rate on that loan is 8% and our tax rate is 25%. And we invest $7,000 of our own money into the business. So our equity is $7,000. The cost of equity is 12%. You can use the capital asset pricing model if it's a public company, but this is a really difficult number to figure out. We could spend hours talking about the cost of equity, but generally 12% is a conservative number, so we'll use that. Now let's calculate the cost of equity. First, we need to figure out the weight of equity. We have $7,000 of equity over $3,000 of debt plus $7,000 of equity. That's our weight of equity, $7,000 over $10,000, 70%. We multiply that by the cost of equity, 12%. That gives us 70% times 12%, which equals 8.4%. Our cost of equity is 8.4%. If our company was 100% equity, we would not have to do any math. Our cost of equity and also our weighted average cost of capital would be 12%. But we're not 100% equity, we're 70% equity. Now we have to figure out the cost of debt. So let's figure out the weight of debt, which is 3,000 over 10,000, 30%. We multiply that by the interest rate of 8%. Then we multiply that by one minus a tax rate because the interest payments on debt is tax deductible. That equals 30% times 8% times 75%, which equals 1.8%. So our cost of debt is 1.8%. If our company was 100% debt, then our WAC would be 6%. It would be 8% times 75%. Now we can easily figure out the WAC. It's just 8.4% plus 1.8%, which equals 10.2%. With most companies, equity is a lot more expensive than debt. You can see 12% is a lot higher than 8%. Plus with debt, you get a tax deduction, so it comes down to 6%. So debt is half the price of equity. Why don't we just fund our entire business on debt? Well, that does make sense in theory. The problem with debt is if you're not making money, you still have to pay the interest on your debt, which is generally not a good idea to add a lot of debt when you're not making money. You want to fund growth with equity when you're losing money. When you start to make money, then you want to add more debt. But generally, a balance makes the most sense. Let's just say, for instance, you use mainly debt to fund your growth, and the interest rate is 8% on the debt. Let's say you did a few rounds of debt and now you have $20,000 of debt. The next time you want to take on more debt, the bank may say you're too risky for 8%. Now we have to charge you 12%. So your interest rate might keep going up, which means your interest payments get higher and higher. 
So generally a balance of debt and equity is the best result for most companies. So to summarize, WAC represents a firm's cost of capital where debt and equity are proportionally weighted. So the weighted average cost of capital identifies the return that lenders and shareholders expect to receive in return for providing capital to a company. You may sometimes hear the word hurdle rate used. You could think of WAC as the hurdle rate which a company can use to decide whether to take on a new project or acquire another company. And the weighted average cost of capital is commonly used as a discount rate when doing a DCF model, a discounted cash flow model. So if a company has returns of 11% and a WAC of 15%, that means the company is losing four cents for every dollar spent. This could indicate to potential investors they may be better off putting their money somewhere else. Of course, if you put money somewhere else, you have to look at the risk of that other company you're investing in and also the opportunity cost. Because if a company is losing money today, that does not mean they're gonna lose money tomorrow and vice versa. If a company's making money today, that doesn't mean they're gonna make money tomorrow. So there's so many things to consider when investing in a company and understanding the whack. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you soon.